All right. Okay, good luck, everybody. Hello, hello, everybody. We'll just give everybody a chance to get on in and then we will get started. So just while we're waiting, if you could make sure that you are on speaker view. Uh, if you are on speaker view, that means that you should be seeing me as your largest screen. Hello, <laughs> I'm Trudy Frolic and I'm the team leader for Team Karingai and Beyond who are bringing you this workshop tonight, the Varoma workshop. So we're gonna be talking steaming tonight. So this is for all of you people who, um, you know, look, some of you might even still have your Varoma sitting in the box, not after tonight. We're going to inspire you to get that out and get using it. Um, look, really, to be perfectly honest, um, oh, sorry. Zoom's just giving me all these messages. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, why would you not use your Varoma when it means that you can double the quantity of food that you get out of your Thermomix? Um, you know, so if you've got a crowd of people coming for dinner, you want to make sure you're picking a Varoma recipe to make for them because, um, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to feed, feed Mami. Um, but the other thing is steaming is so healthy. You don't need butter. You don't need oil. Um, because what happens is um, it's a very gentle way of, of cooking and, and the steam just encapsulates the food. So you're not boiling and driving the nutrients out of the food. You know how if you might boil some carrots on the stove top, you've got this layer of orange sitting on top, goodbye nutrients, you're literally eating mush. So get that aroma out of the box and start using it for all of those good reasons. The other thing I want to draw to your, your attention is this cookbook here, Fabulous Flavour on Every Level. This cookbook is all about steaming. Every single recipe in here is steamed. And we have got desserts and entrees and salads and all sorts of things. This you can find on Cookie Do. Um, you can even put in um, Varoma as one of your searches in Cookie Do. Um, but yeah. It's an Australian uh, cookbook and it's fabulous. So just look out for that one. I'm sure you get lots of ideas and inspiration from that. All right. Now, before we get started, I am just going to give you a very brief run through of the TM6 for those of you who um, might not be familiar with it. I'm just going to add a spotlight there. So now what you should be able to see is me and um, the screen. So what you're seeing there is our manual screen where you've got a time, a temperature and a speed and you can just dial in whatever you want. And you would use that if you were doing your own thing. You might just want to chop an onion for three seconds on speed seven or you might have um, a family recipe that's been handed down for generations that is not a Thermomix recipe. So you want to be able to do that in your Thermomix. Um, so that's your manual screen. But if we swipe over here, what you will see is all of our functions. So we've got our electronic scales, our dough mode for kneading, turbo mode, which is like a pulse button on a food processor. We've got a pre-clean mode, so you can actually clean your bowl. Um, blend mode for your smoothies and soups. Egg boiler mode to boil the most perfect eggs exactly the way you want them every single time. You know, if you want the the white to be firm, but the yolk to be runny, you can absolutely do that. We've got kettle mode, so you can be doing your herbal teas and things all at very specific temperatures. Warm up mode, so you can now actually reheat in your Thermomix um, without having to nuke it in the microwave anymore. Uh, thickening mode for your gravies and sauces and bechamels and hollandaise, um, just to the, the right consistency. Rice cooker mode, clearly for cooking rice. Fermentation mode, um, actually, Ivana's going to take you through that tonight um, and show you how you would make yogurt in your Thermomix. Uh, we've got slow cook mode where you can actually cook something for up to eight hours. Uh, we have sous vide mode, uh, which is where you're cooking in a water bath at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. It's succulent and beautiful. Trust me, if you've never tried sous vide, you really need to. And the latest addition to the show is the peeler mode. So you can actually peel potatoes and beetroot and carrots in um, four minutes or less. So the great thing about the TM6 is 
probably about five of those functions were not there when it was launched. Um, and they just keep giving us more functionality via a software update. But if we swipe across to this side, this is where all the magic begins. This is Cookie Do, our digital recipe library, where we have got um, over 2,000 um, Australian recipes. In fact, I think over 3,000 now. Um, guided recipes where they take you step by step through the actual recipe. Um, and there's over 70,000 global recipes. So trust me, you'll never be short of a recipe and you'll see more of that tonight as well. Now, the price of the Thermomix is um, $2,359. But if you are clever enough to get your order in by noon tomorrow, you can take advantage of our 36 month interest free payment plan. Um, your order would have to be in um, by 12 noon tomorrow to take advantage of that. That's been running for a couple of weeks now, but it does finish tomorrow at, lunch, at, well, at noon. Um, but that actually equates to $16.97 a week. Um, so that means you can have a Thermomix sitting on your kitchen I'm bench right now, the latest model, the TM6. $16.97. Sarah Burnett, can you um, mute yourself, please? Thank you. <laughs> um, for $16.97 a week. So we're going to be using the chat tonight. So if anyone's got any questions, they can type it into the chat. So just to get your chat fingers working, I would love for all of you Thermomix owners, no matter which model you've got, to type into the chat ways that you can save $16.97 a week by having a Thermomix in your kitchen. Now, while you're doing that, we have a very, very special guest that we would like to introduce to you tonight. Oh, and I forgot to mention too, that if you do buy the um, TM6 um, at the moment, I've forgotten which date this finishes, but it doesn't matter, you need to hurry you will also get a 2.6 litre round thermo server. Sorry, I just realised I had another thermo server inside. It's like the Russian dolls. This is an insulated bowl that will keep food hot or cold for up to two hours. It's worth $135, but it is yours absolutely free of charge if you buy a Thermomix at the moment. Okay, enough of that. Let's have a look at our special guest. Amy, can you bring up the, the screen of the special guest? What do we see there, everybody? Can you see that? Have a look at that. That is our sleek, sexy, limited edition black Thermomix. What do you think of that? Can I tell you, um, when they say limited edition, they mean limited edition. These, um, when they were launched in Germany, they sold... The other time, I thought I'd do it. They sold 30,000 in one day, and within one week, they were sold out with 130,000 Thermomixes. Now, we are going to have nowhere near that quantity. So if the black Thermomix, if you think that would look excellent in your kitchen, like it does in Tammy's kitchen, then you can get your hands on one of those, um, but only for a very short time, because once we run out of stock, that is it. They've gone. There will be no more. So um, the price of the black limited edition Thermomix is $2429. But with that, you will actually get two thermo servers. And guess what? To matchy matchy with everything, they're black. So you will get the black 2.6 litre thermo server and the black oval 2.5 litre thermo server. Now that one there is not black. Um, it's just that we haven't got our hands on one yet, but it looks just like that, but it will be black. So that is a bit exciting. Now, if you know anybody who would be interested in getting their hands on one of those, please let them know as soon as you jump off this workshop tonight, because honestly, if you delay, you will miss out. But have a look at that. How cool is it? It doesn't really show up the nice green lights beautifully. And I love the way the cookie do screen just looks so much brighter. Everything else is the same. So everything, you know, your bowl and your lid and everything is totally interchangeable if you've already got a white one, but you'd like to add this into your collection. Um, but yeah, it just looks very, very sleek. Um, you know, black is the new black, but you, you need to hurry. All right, that is enough from me. I am going to hand you over to the lovely Sarah Evans, who is going to show you her hind knees chicken recipe. 
And Sarah is very clever. This is actually her own recipe. So I'll let her tell you all about it. Okay, I'm not Sarah Evans, I'm Sarah Burnett, but no, that's fine. I'll get that right one day, forgive me. Uh, hi, everybody. Yes, I'm going to make the Hyannese chicken. Now, it's um, a recipe, um, it's a delicious recipe. I've, I've had it on the recipe community for quite a long time, and um, I've always been waiting for these created recipes. So it was one of the things that I put as a created recipe onto my Thermomix, and I think they're going to show you how to do it on your... Um, how they come up on your actual screen. Um, so it's Hyannese chicken, and I've called it a Cheeks Hyannese chicken um, because it's very easy. It's one pot and it uses brown rice. Um, the first step is I make a ginger spring onion sauce and, um, and then I go on to make the chicken dish. Um, so I'll just um, run you, we can run you through the ingredients maybe of the recipe. Um, and this is how I've done it up. Um, so Trudy actually has it on her thermomix as well, she's showing you. But there's the ingredients to the left and the prep to the right. And you just, um, in order to put something onto your um, cookie do, you go onto the recipe community and you do it up as a template. And um, one of the most, so you put the, the ingredients on the left and then you go over to do the prep on the right and you paragraphing it is really important. Um, it's very, very easy. Um, they have the um, time, temperature and speed and the weights that pop up and you just underline those ingredients and um, put them in so that it has the steps. But you'll see as I go through, so I'm probably not very explaining it very well. One thing that is really important that I've noticed is on the prep side, if you have things like, um, say, for example, I've got three centimetre piece of ginger, when you're writing it in the preparation side, make sure you put the three centimetre piece of ginger, write that in, because otherwise you've got to refer back, back to the list. Um, but it's on the recipe community, you also can um, take this recipe and if it's something that you think that you'd love to have on your third mix, you can also do it up. And uh, if anyone wants help with that, I can, I'm happy to help them moving forward. So, um, the reason that I love this is because very simple ingredients and amazing result at the end. So in the end, we're going to end up with a whole chicken, which is beautifully flavoured. We're going to have brown rice and a lovely broth underneath and some steamed vegetables and the ginger shallot sauce. So without further ado, we will start. So for the ginger shallot sauce, we just use um, the green part of the um, spring onions, they are and a piece of ginger. And what I'm going to do is pop the, um, all this green into my thermo. I don't need to look at the recipe for this part. So all I've done is pop all that um, green into the Amy, do you have this one? Do you want to replace my spotlight? And we'll come back to this when we oh, start the okay. honey. You've got it. But, but I'm, you're, I'm right down the bottom of the recipe, so because I'm doing the ginger. Oh, okay, sorry. All right, let me just go back to that and let's see if we can just start. So right at when, the end. One of the things that I've noticed with with um, with the um, these recipes is if you go right down to the bot, you actually have to go all the way through. You can't just go into a um, a paragraph like you can in your own cookie do recipes. So if I was going to go, because you, you need to do this first, um, so I'll just get to the spot, because in a cookie do recipe, you can just go straight there. So um, I've got the green in there, and I'm just going to uh, chop three seconds speed seven. And so see it's underlined there, three seconds speed seven, and then we just um, tap and go through, set it up for three seconds speed seven. So we'll just do that. We're just wanting to chop these nicely. Um, okay, and we're just going to do another three seconds speed seven. We're just wanting a fine chop here, really, that's what it is. Uh, 
And so you then take that shallot out and just pop it into a bowl. So basically you're just giving that a quick chop. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the ginger in, give it a quick chop, and then it um, cooks in some oil. The good thing is all this residual that is in your thermomix in your bowl, you will just use later. So I'm going to add um, some olive oil. Hold on. Place three centimetre piece of ginger into my bowl. This is seven. So see, it's all set it up for it's slightly different to what you're used to. But works really well. Um, breaking down, and then we're going to add some olive oil and just give that a quick pull. So that's nice and fine now, the ginger. Scrape down the sides, add some olive oil. So 25 grams of olive oil. Again, it's, it's set up the scales for me because I've actually put this in individually. So I, I think this recipe took me probably half an hour to do, which I actually don't think is too bad, uh, considering I'm going to be using it all the time. So I'm going to cook it for two minutes, aroma, speed one. And while that's cooking, I'll just show you the next step. Okay, so. Now, we have a chicken. So look, I've got a nice Lilydale chicken. It's, um, just so you know, it's about two kilos. It's a pretty big chicken. And um, I'm actually going to set it up onto my aroma dish. Now, see that salts I've got in there? I'm going to, I put the dish, I'll pop that down there. I put the dish onto the tray and I'm just going to set the, the forks like this. Now, the reason I'm doing that is just to lift the chicken up a bit because you want the steam to come through. So just popping the chicken on there and it's got plenty of lift, okay? So that's that's all that's about. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a quick marinade that will go on that. Now, the other bit of prep that I've done is my rice. So I weighed in, um, how much was it? 350, 350 grams of rice. And I actually like to sort of put it in earlier and give it a, a good old soap. That's just sitting in, in my simmering basket, but, uh, but that will be ready to go into the, into the simmer when it needs to. So really I've got my, um, the, what, what's gonna happen with this sauce? Is it's going to have a little bit of salt added. I think it's a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. So this sauce is absolutely delicious. It lasts for quite a few days. And um, you can use it on all sorts of things, actually. So this will be putting a big dollop on the top of our finished dish. Okay, I'm just waiting. Just really ready with that ginger. Now, little handy tip. For you all. Oh, smells divine. So that's the hot ginger oil. So I'm actually just pouring that onto my shallot and then giving that a stir with the salt. And that is actually one of the a sauce that will go onto the, uh, the chicken and bread. Okay, so now back to my recipe. Okay, so this is where we've got to go back up to the top. It doesn't quite work. As... Okay, I only take a few few minutes here. <clears throat> okay, right, we're at the beginning. Okay, so I'm adding some ginger now. A little um trick here. This has all been in the freezer. I put all my ginger, garlic, chili. Everything like that, I put it all into the freezer. Um, it's nice and hard. You don't need to defrost it before you use it. You've always then got it in your freezer. When you buy a whole lot of chilies, you often don't know what to do with it. That is rock hard. So when I cut it, it cuts really evenly, like when you're mixing meat and things. So we're putting in the, um, the ginger, the garlic, three garlic and the chili. And now that last bit of um, spring onion or Echelot, whatever you call it. That that was actually the green. That so that was the top of the spring onion. Now I'm just going to use the bottom of it 
the bottom is sort of third, the white part in here. And um, chopping that three seconds speed seven. Oh, because it's hot. I might have to do that again. Sometimes when you've had a heat in your bowl, it takes a little while to sort of get the top of it. So we will do that again. The three seconds speed seven. Just your fine cutting this is just, just give that a, a mix up while we're waiting. Sorry, <laughs> I just can't get that piece of paper. There it is. Got it. Okay. So that was the ginger. And because it's got that, that slowness after heating. Okay, so I just want to show you what we've got in there. We've got the shallots, the chili, the ginger, the garlic. And the next step, we just put some of the nice um, Asian um, sauces on top. So it is 80 grams of soy sauce. So I've put all this into my, um, and actually I've got 80 grams of um, Chinese cooking wine here too. And I've put it in the same part of the recipe. So I can just tear that and pop the 80 grams of cooking wine in. You don't have to put cooking wine if you, if you don't sort of want to. Makes it a bit tastier. So that's those two. And the sauce, yeah, no, that's it. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a quick mix. So this is just mixing it up um, gently with that um, five second speed five. Just giving that a little mix around. Sarah, one of the guests has asked if you could maybe angle your camera up a tiny bit. Up, up, please. Okay, is that okay? Think so. that? We'll try that. Sorry, I was just trying to get the uh, other other part of the. Okay, so we're going to pour this mix onto the chicken. So it's just. Uh, so I've got the. Remember, I've got the base underneath, so it's not going to pour onto my nice kitchen bench. So we're just going to pour that all onto the chicken. And then we're going to put um, water into the bowl. So no need to rinse out the bowl. We've got all those lovely flavours in there now. So I need 1.3 litres of water. Because this is going to be the broth. The broth is beautiful for this dish. Uh, 1.3. Okay. So that's 1.3 litres of water. Um, and some stock paste. A couple of, we've always got to use our stock paste, of course. So a couple of teaspoons of stock paste. Oh, don't hit the bowl, Sarah. I can hear everybody saying that. Before you can tell me. Um, so that was a little bit of stock paste and we're going to insert the simmering basket in. So this is our simmering basket here with the, with the rice. So I'm just going to pop that in. That's our washed rice. And now we're starting to layer up. Okay, so we've got the chicken. Now I've got it sitting on the tray. There will be some, um, some of the liquid come through. That's okay. I'm just going to pop the lid on. And I'm going to pop the chicken onto the top. It's very simple, it's just a whole chicken. And we've got some juice there that came through and I'm just gonna pour that onto the top and pop the lid on. And it's going for 50 minutes, aroma speed 
So when that finishes, we'll have the lovely sauce. I'll be cutting it up. We'll have the lovely rice cooked. We've got the broth underneath. And I also do make some points, this Hoyan chili jam, which um, I think Amy's going to show you the recipe for that. Um, I'll pop it in the, in the chat if anybody wants to make chili jam. That's a lovely thing to have with it as well. So all I've got to do is uh, pop it on for 50 minutes for Roma, speed 2.5. Now, it, um, it, depending on the size of your chicken, um, it will make a difference with regard to time, obviously. So I'm just going to put that on now. But just remember, obviously, um, a bigger chicken will take a little bit longer. Now, if you want it really um, soft and falling off the bone, probably 65 minutes but you know it's probably going to be cooked after 45 minutes and it's very very forgiving I can make this dish and I can actually leave it sitting in there um I could you know make this at four o'clock leave it sitting in there come home at six o'clock it'll be sitting there beautiful ready to go but I'll show you what it looks like at the end but um it's one of our fa family favorites Thank you so much, Sarah. All right, we are going to move over now to Sarah Evans, Sarah E, um, and she's going to show us how to make a beautiful salmon, quinoa, feta and mixed vegetable salad. Here she is. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. So, yes, I'm Sarah Evans. <laughs> I'm very confusing with the Sarah E and the Sarah B in the table. Um, tonight, I'm doing the salmon, quinoa, feta and mixed vegetable salad. As you know, the, the cookbook that Trudy showed you earlier, The Fabulous Flavour on Every Level, this is a recipe from that book. Now, if you're ever concerned about how much volume the Thermomix can, can make, um, this is one recipe that will absolutely show you that, you know, it is absolutely huge, the amount of volume you can get out of it, um, which is fabulous for if you've got a big family or if you're entertaining or really for whenever, <laughs> if you want to, want to have some for later as well. So this recipe is going to be done in two parts. Um, the first part is just prepping it so it can cook and then you obviously you don't need to watch it cook um, and then at the, at the whip around at the end I'm actually going to finish the recipe so it's actually going to be in two parts but it's just a very very simple recipe so right so I'm just going to pop that down like that so you can see now there's lots of different ways you can find the recipes on your Thermomix um, you can put them into cookie do and do a collection or you can just search it up using the search bar or with tonight, I'm just going to, I've done a bit, bit of a menu plan and I've just put it in as something I'm going to cook today. So I'm just going to my week and it's going to happily find it. And there it is. So again, there's not, always look through your recipe and see if there's any hints and tip, tips at the end. This recipe is um, such a simple one that there isn't really any hints and tips for this particular recipe, but please don't put that, put, let, let that put you off. Go and have a look at the recipes, you know, that you're using and just make sure you check out the end. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do the topping for the salmon. So it's going to give it a bit of flavour and it's, yeah, really delicious. So the first thing we're going to do is we get the zest of half a lemon. So I've just got the peeler and just peeled it. So you can see just in strips, you can do it whichever way you like. Try not to get too much white pith on it because that will make it bitter. So that just gets popped in. And then you want to have some mixed herbs. So it's two to three sprigs. Now you can do whatever type of flavors you want. Uh, it's whatever you've got in the garden, what you've got in the fridge, or obviously you can go and buy what you fancy. I've got, just as a little mix here, that's about three sprigs. Um, I've got parsley and basil and a bit of coriander today because I like coriander with salmon. So, yeah. So there we go. Pop that in. It's a nice combination. It sounds a bit weird, but it's nice. And then we're just going to chop it up. So insert the mixing bowl and it's seven seconds on speed nine. So, again, if you're chopping, turn the dial quickly. Anything hot, turn it Now, again, just remember when you're chopping anything, if it's not chopped as much as you would like, you can always chop it more. So if you're not really big on zest and you want it really, really fine, you can chop it more. So with that one, that one looks pretty good to me. So what we're going to do now is just take that out and you're supposed to set it aside. So I'm just going to whip it out. Not going to be too careful. doesn't really matter about being too careful taking every little skerrick out as we'll see in a minute. 
So I'm just going to pop it into a little bowl that I just had it in before. And we'll come back to that. So there we go. All right, pop it back on the fingers. And we're going, that's just, just that just says transfer it. Now, I'm going to add a clove of garlic. Our family likes garlic, so the clove we've chosen is, is a really big one. But obviously, you know, it depends if you like garlic or not as to how big a clove you choose. Now, again, you can choose how much chili you want to put in. So if you want to go hot, like my husband would prefer me to do, but I'm not going to, you can use a little bird's eye chili. It asks for half the chili. Your choice whether you use the seeds. So the seeds will obviously make it hotter. So, or you can get the longer chilies. And as you can see, I've already cut this one in half. So this is the one I'm using. What I've also done is I've taken the seeds out and I've just, we just scrape it, cut it in half and scrape it with a spoon. And that takes the membrane, which is actually the hot bit out. So you put half a chili in, there you go, like that, with your garlic. And then you put a bit of olive oil. So it's 30 grams of olive oil and you just pour it in. So that's about two tablespoons. So again, if you don't want to measure it, you can just pop it in. It's not going to stop you if you don't get it exactly right. So, right, next, you're going to give that a pop around. So it's very simple. So three seconds on speed seven. Very quick. And then, what you're going to do, I'll just show you that really quickly. Now again, as I said, you can saute that up more if you want. You find that if you put the oil in, a lot of the Asian recipes, um, Asian style recipes, will actually ask you to put the oil in when you are chopping. So what you'll find is it doesn't necessarily chop as fine um, because it's wet. So again, if you would like it chopped finer, go for it. You can just do it for a bit longer. I'm not going to worry. So it doesn't worry me at all. A little bit of texture. Now you need to take the measuring cup out and you're going to saute it for two minutes on 120 degrees at speed one. So that's just, just going to cook it and that's fabulous. Right, so now just, if you want to pop in the chat, if you're, if you're doing any sort of um, salad recipes in the Roma, just to give other people a little bit of inspiration as well. So that's just a little quick thing while this is sauteing. Now the next step is going to be to put your salmon in the garlic. So see here, you know, 600 grams of salmon. So what I've done is I've, I've cut it up and I've got another two pieces here. So for me, this was about, about three pieces of salmon. So I've actually taken the skin off. You can leave the skin on if you want to and take it off when you're about to put it through the salad or take it off now. It doesn't really matter for this recipe, I don't find. Um, make sure you pin bone your salmon <laughs> because you don't want to get bones in it either. So that's important. So that salmon's ready to go when this is finished sauteing. Now, again, this sauce that's going to go on top is this lemon, beautiful lemon flavor. If you don't fancy doing that, or if you don't have those ingredients in your cupboard and you just want to pop some salmon on and make a salad, you can really do anything you like. If you have a bit of miso, you can put a bit of miso on top, or you can do, you know, if you have some rubs, whether you make it yourself or in a jar, you can pop a bit of that on top. So it's just flavoring your, um, your protein. So, and again, with this, if you don't feel like salmon, do chicken, you know, or do, do whatever sort of meat you like. Um, with chicken, I find if you're doing it in the Varoma, you can do any cut you want. You can do tenderloins, or you can do breast, or you can do thigh. Um, and it will always be nice and juicy and tender because it's been cooked with the steam. If you're going to use chicken in the bowl, just as a tip, thigh is really good. It you tend to find a lot of recipes will recommend that you use thigh because even though the blades will be on reverse, it will, um, the, the thigh is just that little bit tougher with the, because it's got the, um, the sinew and things through it and it will stay together. So that's just a little tip for cooking in the bowl. All right, so that's finished sauteing. You can hear it sizzling, it's beautiful. See that? I can smell it, it smells divine. Now what you wanna do is I'm going to just, just now, that um, garlic, uh, that um, lemon zest and herbs, we're just gonna pop that straight into there. So you can use a bigger, bit of a bigger bowl if you want to. <laughs> I've been a bit stingy with the bowl I was using. That one's still quite big, but that's fine. So what you're doing again is scraping that out 
And you're not being too particular about cleaning it because what we're going to do now is get the bowl ready for steaming your quinoa, okay? So we're not written, it tells you not to rinse the bowl. So we want to put in 1,200 grams of water. So just pour it straight in. And this is going to give your quinoa the most beautiful flavour of all of those herbs and the garlic and the chilli. So, there you go, not a lot. So it's just cold water, unless it tells you otherwise, it's cold water. And it's, and it's take, the cooking time for your food has been taken into consideration. So don't worry about thinking, oh, should it be warm or not? The one it tends to be when it's warm, it tends to be when you're making bread. <laughs> but we're not going to go into that now. Right, and a teaspoon of salt. Right. So just get your rock salt and grind it down so that you've got salt for cooking and some for your grinder. So it's just a teaspoon of salt in there. Now, if you don't want to just put salt in, another really good thing to flavour any of your rice or quinoa is your own stock. So your vegetable stock would give it, it gives you a lovely flavour if you want to add that in instead of just salt. So right, and now we're going to pop in the simmer basket. So it's just like Sarah, we're starting to layer now. Sarah B, that is. <laughs> so you add your silver basket and then you add your quinoa. So this is quinoa. You can get it white stuff, or this the one I like is the tricolour. I find it has a beautiful, nutty, really strongly nutty flavour. And I use it in making my bread as well. So, you know, quinoa is, is a whole grain and is really, really high in fibre and protein and vitamin B. So we need 100 grams. We're going to pop it straight in. There's already a bit of water in the bottom there. There we go. And what we're going to do next is you just, you just get your spatula and you stir it so that the quinoa gets nice and wet. You can give it a rinse beforehand if you want to. You know, it's up to you as long as it gets a bit wet. And what that helps it do, helps cook evenly, but it also, um, just saves it dropping through the, the little holes. Sometimes you might lose a few and that's absolutely fine. There you go. So you put your quinoa in and now you're going to put your lid on and then you put your salmon in. So as I said, I've got the salmon. What it's going to ask me to do, I'm going to do it on here. So again, I can any juice that drips down, we can literally catch it in the varoma, in the um, in the quinoa and have that flavour too. So we just have to put a little bit of that on each salmon, piece of salmon, which I can do in a minute. And we're going to cook it for 20 minutes. So you don't need to watch that. <laughs> I'm going to come back to you, as I said, at the end, and you'll see how the whole salad comes together. Thank so, you so much, Sarah. <laughs> we are looking forward to that. All right, we're going to go and move from salads to Chinese dumplings. We've got Haley here to talk you through. I'm going to let her pronounce the name of the recipe because I can't, um, but they're Chinese dumplings. Hi. There she is. Here I am. It's Jiao Zi is the, is the uh, pronunciation, and they are delicious. These are one of my family's absolute favourite um, meals and they come together so so quickly if you never made dumplings before give it a go so I'm going to jump straight into the recipe so we are going to start cooking now 200 grams of cabbage now this recipe has uh, cabbage and then it's got some spring onion and some celery in it my family is not a huge celery lover and the celery flavor in this is reasonably prominent so instead we just put a little bit of extra cabbage in there and it works a treat. You could put carrots or shiitake mushrooms would be delicious. Um, you can do whatever you want. These, these um, dumplings really are a great way to kind of hide some um, vegetables. So that is my cabbage, my celery, which I'm not using, and my spring onions. Then I've got a teaspoon and a half of salt. And what that's gonna do, the salt is gonna break down the cabbage so it's gonna release a lot of its water. So I'm going to pop that on now. The lid is on and it's having a mix. Now, whenever I make this, I always make a cup. Oh, can't hear me? Two, one. 
There you go. Whenever I make this, I always make a double batch because it makes about 30. Um, but the time it takes you to make 30, you might as well make 60 and then you've got extra meals for later. Now, I'm going to strain this or put this into the simmer basket um, to catch the liquid. So the excess liquid out of that cabbage is going to drain out. And it also helps to drain out a little bit of the um, sometimes spring onion can have a very strong oniony flavour. So the, getting the water out, so it's chopped up beautifully there, you can see. I will bring the camera down when I'm doing the dumplings. Beautiful. So that was a pretty full bowl of vegetables and that has come down beautifully. Now I'll show you that in the rice basket. Do, do, do. So that's come down to not a huge amount, but it's still got all the good fibre and goodness in there. And what that's gonna do, if you can see it's starting to drain through already. So I'm gonna set that aside while we mix our meat portion. Beautiful. Now you can use any mince for this. I like to use pork mince. Um, and this is just a good free range, uh, a nice free range pork mince. Um, chicken is nice, um, beef is nice as well, or a mixture of both. Duck would be delicious. Uh, teaspoon of sesame oil. Now I eyeball all my measurements. If you want to, and you've got a TM6, you can touch your three little dots and you can go to the scales and you can do five grams for a teaspoon or about 15 grams for a tablespoon but I'm happy to eyeball. So a teaspoon of sesame oil, a tablespoon of vegetable oil. The, I, I'm using olive oil, um, a light olive oil, so it hasn't got a strong flavor. The oil is actually really important for the mouth feel of the dumpling. Um, this free range pork does tend to be quite lean and you need that fat in there to be really um, unctuous and give you the nice mouth feel. So a tablespoon of oyster sauce, there you go. A teaspoon of white sugar. Ta -da. Teaspoon of light soy sauce. Perfect. And then ground pepper. I'm omitting the ground pepper because kids go, oh, I don't like it. Uh, and then two teaspoons of shaoxing rice wine. Now, beautiful. This shaoxing rice wine, you can get it in Coles and Woolworths. It's not um, difficult to find just in the Asian section. It makes a big difference to the flavour, though. It kind of gives it a deeper flavour. It's worth finding. If you can't find that, I think you can use... Oh, no, I blanked on what else you can use, but use it. Um, then I'm putting the mixture. I'm also adding in a little bit of um, ground ginger. Uh, that's my personal preference. I'm using about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger. Um, Interesting random fact, uh, don't use fresh grated ginger in your dumplings because there's acids in the fresh ginger that will um, make the pork or the mince you're using, the proteins in the mince will feel really mealy, like um, dry-ish. But yeah, but dried, uh, dried ginger is fine or cooked ginger. If you cook your ginger and then put it in your dumpling, that's fine. Beautiful, lid is in, that's mixing for 10 seconds. Now it's going to mix around and get all of those lovely um, sauces mixed in and then it's going to knead for a minute and the kneading works the proteins and kind of binds the proteins of the meat together and it also gives us a chance to press the liquid out of our cabbage. Beautiful. Next, keep the lid on. I'll just show you now. So you can see there it's kind of mincy mixture. Oh no, back. God bless the back button. I'll get my cabbage. Green liquid on a green plate. But you can see there's quite a bit of liquid has come out of that. And then I'm just going to spend a moment just pushing this. You can see all that liquid coming out. So I'm just going to spend a little minute pushing that liquid out while that's moving. Yeah, so have you ever made dumplings? It's so worth giving a go. And these freeze amazingly. They freeze so well. So I will um, make a few for us tonight to, to show the finished product this afternoon, later today, uh, tonight. And then uh, the rest I will just put in a single layer in a Tupperware container. Um, and then whenever I want to um, have dumplings, I can get them out and steam them in the thermomix at the same time um, that it says actually in the recipe, they steam beautifully. 
or you can also do them like a pot sticker in a frying pan or a gyoza so they've got the um crispy bottom on them so to do that you just put the frozen dumplings and put some oil in a frying pan frozen dumplings on the top and then uh once it's all coming up to heat the bottom starting to brown put in a half a cup of water and then leave that for about 10 minutes i do test i do i would give one a test just to make sure because your oven heat might or your stove top heat might be different to mine beautiful so i've got a lot of liquid out of that what I'm going to go to next, and I'm going to add in the revert reserved cabbage mixture. Now I'll show you the texture of that has changed now. It's uh, it looks more sticky, and there's more like it's um stuck to the edge of the bowl. So back in with my cabbage mixture, this rice basket. It's funny. A lot of the people, a lot of people, don't use to their Verona to its full potential, but also the rice basket. A lot of people don't use this to its full potential. I love to put um, my berries, blueberries and strawberries and raspberries uh, in there when I'm back from the markets. And um, I put it onto speed four, put, fill it with water, rice basket in with the berries in, onto speed four with some vinegar and give your berries a wash. You will be amazed how much stuff comes off them. But the Thermomix is beautiful and delicate enough to get it all off without um, damaging the berries, which is awesome. Uh, I will done that next and then lid is in and that's going to mix for five seconds. Now, I'll show you, I'll move the camera down so you can see. Let's set up two. Moving the camera back. Moving. Lost my light, that's okay. We'll work it out in a minute. Moving the Thermomix back, so, and also lifting my Thermomix, never dragging it. Lid goes off. Perfect. So then I've got my lovely mix there. Plug that back in because it will be much easier for you to see. Right. Prop bound working in um, working in a corner here. I'm sure anyone who's worked from home can relate because that's always a fun time. Better. All right. So Ned, now we've got that beautiful mix all mixed up. Now here's a little hack that I do. These are um, the piping bags they are from the mix shop i was lucky enough to get these as a reward for the consultant um these are fantastic for this. now you can use teaspoons don't take teaspoons of mix out of the thermomix though always decant it into something else then use it because you don't want to um, put metal utensils into the thermomix unnecessarily so i'm going to put that mix into my piping bag i'll just put a little bit in for now so we're not here all evening. When my daughter was little and she'd have day naps, I would make up a huge batch of dumplings. And then I would just sit on the couch with all this on the coffee table lined up as a little production line and make 150 dumplings at a time because it's such an easy dinner. So I've got my mix there ready to go. Now I will move the camera down so that you can see what I'm going to do here. Now, these are wonton wrappers that I got from Coles. Um, I do make them myself. There is a fantastic recipe for wonton wrappers um, in cookie dough. It is not hard to make at all. I was just time poor today. Now, you can also buy gaji wrappers, which are the gaji ones are round and wontons are square. I prefer the wonton wrappers because they are thinner. The gaji wrappers tend to be a little bit more, a bit thicker and a little bit coarse. So what I'm gonna do, I have my little gaji, sorry, wonton wrapper, and I literally cut the edges off. And my kids love these bits. I separate all the little edge bits out and we have them like little noodles. So nothing goes to waste. So I'll show you what I do. I'm gonna move this down properly. And I've got a lovely fresh green plate. So you've got a contrast. So I'll just do four for now. I'll, actually I'll just do two because Trudy's probably going, ah, time. Oh, these are the... Um, you must have ESP, Hayley. I know. <laughs> so with my mix here, I put in about a teaspoon, so about that much, but you can see how easy the piping bag makes it. And then, if you can see, I put it back in the glass, upside down so that my glass doesn't get all mucky and messy. Now, I have a little um, container there with water in it. I'm going to dip my finger in the water and I wet half of the dumpling just half, half of each dumpling. Then I pick it up 
that's my wet side there. Now, this is how I like to do it. I like to do a little fold and a pinch. And I fold it over my finger and I pinch. Now, you can do it however you would like. There is no right or wrong. It's just getting them sealed. So as long as you've got an airtight seal or a watertight seal, sorry, then that is absolutely perfect. I'll show you again. So here we are. Pinch, I go put it over my thumbnail, over my uh, fingernail, and then bring it back and pinch over and pinch, over and pinch, over and pinch, over and pinch. And you can see it's quite a therapeutic thing to do. So the recipe itself, the recipe itself takes no time. And you could literally, if you wanted to, you could literally put your mix in there and just squish it flat like a taco if you wanted to. As long as it's got water around the seal, it is perfect. But these are delicious. They make my life so easy. My kids love these in their lunch boxes. In wintertime, I put them in a thermos in the lunch boxes. Give these a go. There is a fantastic yum char collection with a whole bunch of different dumpling ideas. I'm going to make some of these dumplings. Um, uh, the next step for this is, oh, I will show you just quickly. Aroma. So this is the bit we've all been waiting for. These are, I have these fantastic uh, little Varoma liners. It does, it does make it a whole heap easier to get them out if you have these little Varoma liners. You can use greaseproof paper and you um, cut it to size, scrunch it up, open it out, scrunch it up, open it out again, and that way it'll kind of fit into the curves. Or you can get these in the mix shop. They're not expensive at all, but they're worth every cent. And so I will line my little guys up from there. Uh, not touching, I want them to be a little bit separated. Um, but I could probably do 15 or 20 in here at once easily and in the bottom layer. Layer. Uh, I will, I've boiled a kettle to speed up the cooking process so that I'm ready for finishing time, but I'm going to make some more dumplings. If anybody has any questions, uh, let me know in the chat. Thank you so much, Hayley. I just wish that you were making my school lunches for me when I went to school because I would have loved to take some dumplings <laughs> to school. Better than, a, better than a Devon sandwich, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Louise. All right, going to hand you over to Mel now and she's going to show you the art of making sticky toffee puddings. Mel. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my kitchen. This is one of those classes where I wish that we had Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's smell vision um, or taste of vision or something that gave you access to how incredible my kitchen currently smells. Okay, so I'm just going to bring the camera over. We'll just have to excuse the 17 year old in the background as he gets himself ice cream. Wasn't, wasn't going to wait for the, for the puddings. All right, so how is that for vision? That's okay. All right, so with this recipe, we're actually going to be starting a little ways in. So we, oh, they got, look at Tammy. Ah, oh, no, Amy. Well done, Amy. Thank you. Okay. So we're actually going to be starting a little ways in to this recipe so we can get the puddings on to steam. And we're going to be adding our reserved dates and, and soaking water. Now, for those of you that have made sticky date puddings before, you know that we have um, hopefully pitted dates generally speaking, with our bicarb soda and boiling water. So they're going to pop into the bowl like so. I'll just bring my camera up a little bit further so you can see what's going in as well. Okay, now we're going to add in 40 grams of unsalted butter. Now, I've already pre-weighed all of this just so that we um, can save a bit of time. But talking about wanting to taste things, on Thursday in our Waterloo office, we actually have um, one of our first face-to-face -face classes in I don't know how long. So the class that we're actually doing is our um, Masterclass 101. Now, the next step I've got here is dark brown sugar, flour, and baking powder. I've got it all together. I'm going to pop that in. So the reason I mentioned this class is, number one, it's face-to-face, -face, but in this particular class is one of my other most favorite, favorite puddings, which is the steamed orange puddings. They are just divine. So if you're keen to find out more, please get in contact with your consultant um, and they, they can send you on the link for that class. Okay, so it's in our Waterloo office and guess what? 
you'll be able to see up close and personal the black thermomix. So if you're keen to see it in person, that's a great opportunity to do so. So now we're going to mix for 20 seconds on speed five. Now, the other things that we're doing in this class, we're making homemade ricotta and we're turning that ricotta into savoury baked ricotta. We're making a, rug, a rhubarb and strawberry compote as well. And we're doing the wild chicken salad where we make our own citrus salt, our lemon and caper aioli. It's just, it really is the Masterclass 101 really is one of those classes that's absolutely worth getting to see if you can. Okay, so the next thing it's asking us to do is divide evenly between Dariol molds. Now, because we're in a class tonight and a class scenario, what I have done is I have already made a batch. So with this, whoopsies, we're knocking the camera over. With this particular batch, I'm going to do it slightly differently because I'm gonna freeze these. Most of our puddings, in fact, I haven't found one yet that doesn't freeze really, really well. But this particular um, recipe does make enough for the eight Dariol molds as it suggests. But what I'm doing with this one is I'm actually going to use individual silicon cupcake molds. Um, purely because, again, if, if, if I make the Dario molds, I'll eat the Dario molds. Uh, I do have three teenage boys and they are quite fond of these, um, this class, actually, as it turns out. So, um, but none of us need to eat an unending number of puddings. So I'm just three quarters filling the um, silicon cupcake molds. I have actually pre-oiled them just with some spray on olive oil, but you, you know, really with these particular molds, because you can get your hands around them and get, you know, peel them off, they do actually come off quite nicely anyway. You'll see that I'm avoiding the middle of the Varoma tray. And the reason for that is, that is where sometimes you'll get liquid dropping from the tray above um, and it just wets one of the puddings that is there. So now we're gonna fill the ones on top. And then we're going to steam them. Now, the recipe calls for the darioles to be steamed for 30 minutes. Obviously, these are quite a bit smaller. So um, I found in the past that about 20 minutes is sufficient. And it gives you, you know, being steamed, it really does give you that beautiful, fluffy um, pudding consistency, which we all really love. Now, this particular recipe can be made as a whole. Um, so you could do one big one. You could add some additional flavors in like chili and the like. And for those of you that are using cookie do, you'll note that with recipes, there's actually lots of tips and tricks on these recipes. And this one is no different. So the tips on this one, um, my favorite tip to be honest, is you can double the amount of sauce. And yes, I will be. So who doesn't love the caramel sauce? Okay, so those puddings are good to go. Now, it says to put 700 grams of water into the bowl that you've rinsed. I have another bowl up, set up, ready to go. And so, this goes on and away we go. All right, so now, um, one of the, another one of the things I love about the six is you can actually jump around um, the recipe details. We're going to go back into the recipe detail and we're going to start at the point in time when we're making the sticky toffee sauce. Now, some of the other tips talk about this um, where you can put different things in. So, for example, adding some coffee in. So it's a coffee caramel sauce. And I actually like to use um, cream instead of using milk so that's another tip um, for your puddings and while i'm doing this who can share with me their favorite puddings that they're making at the moment has anyone tried the raspberry and white chocolate uh, we've done that in one of our other aroma classes but what puddings are you making so not just your christmas puddings but what other puddings are you making and it's getting to that time of year where it really is pudding time 
Mel, okay, so can I ask yes. you a quick question? Um, sure. I just wanted to point out to everybody that we have just celebrated your 10 year anniversary with Thermomix. Yes, Trudy. Cause for celebration. But I'm curious to know yes. what is it that has, um, first of all, that made you decide to become a Thermomix consultant, but more importantly, um, made you decide Why have to I stay for 10 years? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, funny thing, when I first bought my Thermomix, it was for my now 19 and almost 20 year old son. Um, who had a series of, um, for want of a better word, we'll call them allergies. And I used to spend hours in the kitchen and a girlfriend of ours invited us to dinner. And she, um, we used to get takeaway on the way home because she was such a bad cook. Anyway, went, loved it, bought the Thermomix. And I had no, I had absolutely no intention of becoming a consultant. Um, but the girlfriend that I purchased from, I'd actually done Enyo with. And Louise said to me, oh, Mel, you'd be wonderful at this. I was like, I don't have time for that. I had, at that point, I think the twins must have been six because Heath would have been eight, almost nine. Um, and um, three weeks later, I was a consultant. And I think, you know, I love the Thermomix. I've been around now for the 31, um, the five, and now the six. Um, and I guess only time will tell if I'm around or whenever, you know, the next one comes along. But the machine I love, um, but the people I have met along the way are truly what keeps me here now. And that's not just the consultants that I've met in our team. We do have a lot of fun, um, but also the people that you meet. So uh, customers, um, you hear, you get to share your journey and what you've learned along the way, which we do, we learn heaps as a consultant, but, you know, I know that every house I walk into or virtually walk into these days um, that gets a Thermomix will absolutely benefit from having one in their house. So that's probably why I'm still here. And also having just earned a Black Limited Edition. So, you know. We, we perks, get to cool things. Yeah, yeah. The perks are pretty cool. So. Um, I've now got my sticky toffee pudding sauce on and again I've already got one made ready to share so that's the sticky toffee puddings there's so many puddings to try so have a look on cookie do um, if you need some inspiration ask for it in the chat and I'll be back in the loop around to show you exactly what it looks like when it's done thank you Mel um, now we're going to hand you over to Ivana who has been having a few internet issues so um Hopefully, we'll be okay with this. Um, but, Ivana, are you there to, to talk all things? Um, hey, Trudy, I am absolutely here and a very, very warm welcome to everyone watching tonight. It's uh, one of my favourite workshops. Oh, did we just lose you, Ivana? <laughs> You're making me nervous. Amy's nodding her head. Okay. Um, okay, so I think she's doing the yoga, isn't she, Trudy? Yes, she is. Mel, do you want to take over? I can jump on in there. So if Amy just wants to bring up that recipe and I'll just have a look at it on my other device. Okay, so one of the recipes that um, Ivana is using is the natural yogurt, pot set yogurt using the Thermomix. Now, I have, as I said, three teenage boys um, and this one is actually using the Aroma method. And it means that that white uh, thermo sever that you can see there actually fits perfectly into the top of the Varoma. So there's different tricks that you can use. You can use um, the long life milk, which means that you don't have to worry about heating and then cooling your milk. You can add different flavors. When I first started with Thermomix, my twins were addicted to ski vanilla yogurt. And I used to buy that till the cows came home. Um, but the great thing about making your own yogurt is you can actually decide how much sugar or not goes in. So we'll just, what, oh, we have you back, Ivana? Yes, I'm so sorry of all the nights. I think they've dug up our backyard, our neighbours, and uh, they've somehow um, damaged our internet connection. So I'm really sorry about that because I'm so excited to be actually presenting this. So I'm back. Uh, thank you for your patience. Um, let me just say why I love this recipe before I hopefully uh, don't get disconnected again. So 
there's, if you go to Cookie Do, you're going to find a homemade yogurt collection. And there are lots of yogurt recipes to choose from. Now, the one I've chosen today is the one that my family loves for many, many reasons. And it's called the Natural Yogurt Varoma Method. Now, why do I, why does my family love this recipe so much? First of all, um, I love simple, straightforward recipes on, a, on an everyday basis. And this is so easy quick to put together and you get this beautiful thick creamy and really delicious result then what is also really important to my family is that we love to control what goes into our food so there's a real quality control and you can uh, adjust the amount of sugar you can see what's going into your food it's all made from scratch and i don't know about you watching tonight but before i had the thermomix um, I found the whole process of making yogurt a little bit daunting and now I can assure you, please trust me, go off tomorrow and make your own yogurt because it is so simple, so straightforward. It involves only four ingredients and for all those budget conscious people out there, especially now with the fuel prices going up, things becoming more expensive, we all have to be a bit more mindful of our pennies. It actually costs just under $2 to make a whole liter of yogurt. And it also appeals to me from an environmental point of view that there is also less packaging involved when you make your own. Uh-oh, we're frozen in motion there. <laughs> okay, so I would agree with Ivana on all those points. Not, you don't have to use your own package, you don't have your own packaging. Um, and if you've got little people that are into the yogurt um, uh, sachets or pouches, you can actually buy reusable ones of those. So again, having a Thermomix is all about having control over how you cook and what you cook. And with the Varoma method, you can leave it overnight and it can be ready the next morning. So you don't have to actually use your Thermomix during the day when you could be creating things like sticky toffee puddings for dessert. So, Mel, do you mind yeah. just stepping us through the recipe? Amy's got it up there on the screen. One moment, please, Cola. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, actually, what I will do is I will just stop my sticky toffee pudding and I will search for it on my Thermomix. Well, I, I can talk them through. Um, so you place a small bowl onto the, um, the Thermomix mixing bowl lid. Yep, I've got it now, Trude, so that's yeah, cool. Right. And um, sorry, Trudy, okay. I'm back. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Here, I'm back. That's okay. Go ahead, Ivana. Wait, and we're you just... know what? If I disappear, if I disappear again, I think that will be, I just, I, I, we've done everything we can about our internet. It's just one of those misalignment of signs. Yeah. So let me just yeah. finish off my last sentence. Ivana, so, if you could yeah. just step us through the recipe, because that's where we're up to now. We've got the 55 grams of natural yogurt. Amy's just okay. taking us through the recipe. Wonderful. What I would like to say is the way that I do it and uh, before I step you through, is that I make the Thermomix do the night shift so that it actually, I've got full use of the machine when it actually works for me and the family at night. So what you do is you take 50 grams, 55 grams of yogurt. Now it's got to be pot set yogurt and there's different types that you can use. Um, and I like these two brands. These, these are the two that I use. Um, and to step you through. So you place a small bowl uh, on top of the thermix, you measure, you measure it out, you measure the 55 grams, then you set it aside and then you take full cream milk. Now, I strongly recommend using full cream milk instead of light milk because it changes the consistency. Um, and you place it into your bowl. Um, and what is really important, you've got to make sure that all the bowl, everything that you're using is really clean so that it doesn't, so you can get rid of uh, bacteria, that you don't produce any bacteria. Then next, what you do is you bring the temperature of your milk up to 80 degrees, and then you have to let the Thermomix then cool it down back to um, a lower temperature when you are using cow's milk or natural milk. Now, let me give you a little tip. If you want to skip this step of heating up the milk, 
and then cooling it down again and not in, inserting that 45 minutes into your process. If you want to go, you know what, I want to make this even faster, I've got a secret for you. You can actually use long life milk and that actually helps you skip this entire step of heating the milk up and bringing the temperature down because this is pasteurized milk already. So you would just completely miss this step. Now, again, I would use a Coles or a Woolies brand. Uh, you don't have to invest a lot of money into it. Works well with just a normal uh, supermarket brand. Now, fingers crossed that I don't get uh, zapped out again. Um, you let it cool down. Another little tip that is not just relevant to this recipe. Did you know, TM6 owners, that if you take your bowl out and you put it back in, your thermal mix actually shows you, your TM6 actually shows you the temperature of your bowl. So when you look in that middle circle, it actually shows you if your temperature has gone up and what temperature it is. That's just a little tip. So let's go on. Now, you add a little bit of your cooled milk into your yogurt, you mix it together, you put it back into the bowl, you add it to the yogurt mixture. And now this is essential for making this recipe. You need instant full cream milk powder. Once again, I'm using just a Colds brand. Uh, it costs about $10 and there's loads of it. Secret to making really, really creamy, thick, delicious yogurt is to double the amount. So it says here to add 50 grams, I would add more and that definitely increases the creaminess of your yogurt. And then um, this is the part that I love because this is where we start talking about health. It says here, 30 grams caster sugar. I have never added 30 grams. I do a third or a maximum half of that amount. And this is what I'm talking about, controlling the quality, the sugar content of your yogurt. Um, but you can also substitute that either with vanilla bean paste, vanilla essence, um, or you can add some honey. And that can be, that can be added in this step to change the flavor of your yogurt. Next step, you insert the measuring cup and what it needs to do, it needs to all mix together. So you get the idea. You've had your pot culture. Now, another tip, I always use 55 grams of the yogurt that I have previously made to make my yogurt again. I do have to say after about six or seven rotations of cycles, um, it diminishes a little bit in its power. So then I go back, I get a uh, pot set yogurt again, and it does its magic all over again. Anyway, so you mix all this up together, the, the cream powder, the yogurt, the milk, and da-da-da, this is where then you pour, pour it then. Now, this is what I do. I pour it into my thermal server, right? Now, this is a two-liter thermal server, and what happens? If you don't have a thermal server, you should, by the way, because I think they're absolutely wonderful for many uses. But if you don't have a thermal server, all you need to do is find a bowl of maximum two liters that has a lid. So you place all the ingredients in your thermal server, you put the lid on top, and then this is the best part. When it goes on top of your bowl, so for me, I would start at about eight. My milk will be cooled down, ready at about nine. And then at about nine o'clock, I will go, yes, I'm gonna put my water inside the bowl. I add a little bit of lemon juice. So it actually says to be precise, 30 grams of lemon juice. Why are you adding the lemon juice? Nothing to do with flavor. The lemon juice or vinegar or a, a type of an acid is in there to make sure that your blades do not rust. If your Thermomix is on for more than five hours on high heat, you've got to make sure, regardless of what recipe you're using, that you're adding lemon juice to the water to protect your blades. And then here we go. This is, you put the Varoma on top of your Thermomix. You've got your thermal serve inside with a lid, or like I said, a bowl with a lid. And you press 10 hours. And this is that wonderful fermentation process that then turns this liquid that you started off with, that you put quickly together overnight in the morning. For me, it's usually seven o'clock when the kids are all getting ready. I have almost finished yogurt because the only missing step now is that I have to put the thermal server and I'll show you 
this what it then looks like i've got it ready made here now look how beautiful i wish i could invite you all to my house to have a look but look just how beautiful and creamy this yogurt is it's absolutely delicious and this is what you have once you've taken it off and put it in your uh, fridge for about four hours this is what you get this beautiful delicious mixture um and Trudy, I'm going to then um, do the whip around with you guys and I'll show you how I serve it to my family then. But that is um, the process. And uh, just one more thing. If you want. Okay, we've lost Savannah again, so we're going to keep on moving this time. Um, Sarah Evans, are you ready to show us your um, the last part of your dish? And then we might just launch the poll. Yes, I am. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right, so the very last bit of my dish, as I said before, is um, so what's happened in the meantime, I'll just show you. Look at that. So I've got a nice big bowl. Later on, you add kale, or if you don't like kale, and we don't like kale, is... Um, even though kale's really good for you, is, is baby spinach. So what I've done is, is the quinoa, this is not quite cool, it's been a bit quick. I've got the quinoa there and all the beautiful salmon that I've done. Now what we need to do is just finish it off by chopping up the vegetables. So really, really easy. You grab some capsicum. You can be green, it can be red, it doesn't matter. So about 160 grams. Um, if you take your lid off and it goes into a negative, just hit the tear button and it will bring it back to zero. So add in your capsicum, then add in a bit of red onion, 50 grams of red onion, just normal red onion. And then, okay, the next step is, this is where, again, you adjust it to your family's tastes. The next thing says 120 grams of cucumber, which is about that. My husband cannot tolerate <laughs> cucumber. So I'm just gonna pop that to the side and I'm gonna add that to mine at the end but I don't want to spoil it for him. He will not even handle the flavour of it and pick it out. So the next thing we do is 100 grams of feta cheese. Pop that in. And then the remainder of your herbs. So it had eight to nine sprigs. So it's about 12 sprigs to start with. So we pop that in. And then a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. So there's one thing about this recipe, as you would have noticed, there is an awful lot of ingredients. But it is worth it. It is really tasty. And I said the volume is also part of it. And then a tablespoon of vinegar. You can use whatever vinegar you want. I've just used some white because it's just what I found. And then again, 30 grams of olive oil. So pour that straight in. And it goes so slowly when you want to do it like this. Right, there we go. 30 grams of olive oil, a little bit of salt. Half a teaspoon, it's one and a half teaspoons. And so I'll put about half a teaspoon in this and then you pop a little bit of pepper in as well. So that's your nice veggies. I'm gonna give that a really quick drop for five seconds on speed four. Just while that's chopping, can I just point out to you all that um, once the workshop finishes, the presenters and I will be sticking around so if we haven't had a chance to answer one of your questions in the chat, you will be very welcome to come off mute and have a chat with us. So, um, yeah, don't get too worried if we haven't managed to answer your question in the chat. We are doing the best we can, but we want to keep moving. Okay, so you, all you have to do now, so that's the top that you can see, and you just have to bring, the box, bring it down the side, and then you add your tomatoes. Now, again, <laughs> my husband can't tolerate tomatoes. So I've got this much for me, but it's actually should have about four Roma tomatoes, three to four Roma tomatoes, depending on how big they are. So again, those are just sitting to the side for me, <laughs> so adding in later, and then an avocado. So I've done a bit of extra avocado because he likes that. So you can always adjust it. So it's like anything, just do it to your taste. Now, this is just a stir on reverse, just to mix that through. A 10 second stir. And then that's gonna stir it around. And then we're gonna add it to the salad and toss it through. And then I'll just show you how to finish it off. And that's how you put it. 
Sorry, Sarah, go ahead. Would you like me to finish now? I can do yeah, that. if you can do that really quickly for us, that would be great. So I'm just going to turn this down to my bowl. Can you see that? And I'm just going to, what you do is just pop that in. So that's all your vegetables. And it should have cucumber and tomato in too, remember? <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> okay. And then you just toss it around. So it's not going to be very pretty. I would do it prettier if I had a bit more time. <laughs> anyway, so you give that a quick toss so you can see. Beautiful salad full of yummy stuff. And then you sprinkle a few craisins on top. Like that. You sprinkle a bit of feta. And then the last thing you can do is you, they say to add pumpkin seeds, but what I do at home is I have um, just here, you can see here a mixture of seeds. So this has got pepitas, it's got sesame, and it's got some sunflower seeds. I put them in the oven with some tamari. So you mix up just the, the low salt um, soy sauce. And that on any type of salad is absolutely beautiful. And there you go. And that. Wow. Sarah, that, that looks, <laughs> sorry, that, that looks so delicious. Thank you very much. Now, be before we continue with the whip around, we're just going to quickly launch our poll. Um, there are just a few quick questions. Actually, Amy, can you launch the poll for me? Because it doesn't like me because I've logged in from another device. <laughs> okay. There are just a few quick questions in that poll. Um, so we might do both. We might get you to answer those questions for us if you wouldn't mind while we continue with the whip around. Thank you, Sarah. That is absolutely delicious. Uh, and as I said, if you've got any questions that we haven't managed to answer in the chat, feel free to stay with us afterwards and we will um, answer them um, by having a chat with you. Okay, what do we got there? Sarah with her hind knees chicken, actually. Oh, Sarah, we'll just get you to do that for us. Okay. Sarah, we got you. But you must be on mute because we cannot hear you. Okay, while well, Sarah's figuring that out, we've just got three quick questions in the poll. Would you like to book a cooking experience with your consultant and get your hands on some of those fabulous um, host rewards, including the thermo server that we've been talking about? Um, you can even get yourself a blade peeler at the moment. Uh, would you be interested in finding out more about becoming a Thermomix consultant? We would love to answer your questions about that. And what I didn't let you know before is that if you do want to find out about becoming a Thermomix consultant and you decide to go ahead, you will be one of the first people to get your hands on our slide board um, that is valued at $149.95. So, um, and we're talking the slide board of all slide boards. <laughs> um, and the last question is, if you don't already have a Thermomix, would you like to get one into your kitchen, especially before 12 noon tomorrow um, when our 36 months interest-free offer ends? Okay, so if you wouldn't mind answering those questions for us, that would be fabulous. And Sarah, um, we, Sarah Burnett, you can talk to us now. I unmuted again. Yep. Yes, okay. you're fine, don't touch it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just um, actually getting it together. I just wanna show you what I did. So the rice came out at um, about 50 minutes. And the, the good thing about this recipe is the rice comes out perfectly. So I've actually just popped it. You know, you take out your, your rice with your um, spatula and I just popped it into my thermo server to, to rest. And that's the lovely brown rice. It's got a beautiful flavor. I've just put some of that in a bowl. Now I steamed some of the um, in the top and I'll just show you what the um, chicken like. So here's the whole chicken. You can see that. And what you would do is you would carve off it off how you like. I'll just quickly do a little bit just to show you. So I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit of breast. 
perfectly cooked. Just rest it up there. And then this is the piece de resistance. Now, this is filled with the most divine broth. Honestly, it could smell my kitchen. If I had a little bit more time, I might um, cut that up a little bit. But this broth is delicious. So I always serve it in a deep bowl like this. So you've got the beautiful broth with the chicken. And then we put some of this shallot, which has just been steeping in that um, oil with the ginger. So I put a little pile of the shallot there and I would put some of my chili jam on top. And it smells delicious, beautifully cooked. Um, and a couple of things that I do do um, is I will um, use this chicken over the next few days um, and I will shred it and I'll use it in Vietnamese rice paper rolls and things. I mean, whole chicken is a fantastic thing to have in your fridge and the rice is delicious as well. That, that looks absolutely delicious. Thank you, Sarah. I'm sure your family will enjoy that um, with their late dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to hand you over to Hayley um, to have a look at those uh, Chinese dumplings. Hayley, um, if you can just speak. I'm here. Okay. Howdy. Yes. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. I have made a whole lot of dumplings. So that one batch has made almost 50 dumplings. So much so I had to break out another packet of wrappers. And you can see there how I stack them, just uh, one going one way, one going the other way, pop that in the freezer, and that will be two dinners with vegetables and noodles and that sort of thing. Um, now, also, I thought I'd show you a tip um, for getting things out of the room, the aroma. It's good you take the lid off, duh, like so, and then you can put it down. Oh, well, should I bring it up here? Then the varoma can catch any drips. So if you've got chicken in there or something delicious, you're not going to have chicken dripping all over your bench when you want that lovely sauce so you can keep it. So here is my fantastic little jazzy. Now I will, I have asbestos hands so I can move them over. They smell incredible. These taste so delicious. Now I was also pleased to find that when I... Uh, click through the recipe, there is a little video in there that shows you how to do the baking paper and also how to do the dumplings. It shows you actually a little step-by-step -step little video in there of how to do the dumplings. Now, those videos are being updated often, so you'll have a recipe that'll suddenly have it, and they're fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I, I will be serving this with a soy sauce and black vinegar. Thank you, Sandy. Um, soy sauce and black vinegar is um, my favourite dipping sauce, but you can also do like a chilli crisp or the chilli jam is amazing as well. So, yeah, but the Yum Cha collection, um, if you search, you can search in Cookie Doo by recipe or by collection, Yum Cha collection, incredible. And particularly around Chinese New Year, there were some amazing recipes coming out as well. So give them a go, kids. Love it. My kids love making this and they eat so much more because they've been involved in it. And it doesn't matter if it looks like a dog's breakfast, if it goes in their tummies and there's no whinging, it's perfect for me. And, and the other great thing is, is that we know exactly what's inside them. Like my, mm -hmm. my, my new son-in-law, um, he, um, he can't eat Chinese food because he, um, he gets migraines from the MSG. Um, so he gets so excited when I make anything Chinese for him in the Thermomix because we're making yes. it from scratch, yeah, and he can oh, eat it with confidence. He'd love that Mongolian lamb then. The Mongolian oh, lamb is amazing. He loves them all, don't you worry. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> okay, last but not least, um, Mel. Thanks, Haley. That That's fantastic. Yeah. Mel, let's have a look at those puddings. Mel, our okay. multitasker from yogurt to puddings. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Can you see the puddings on the plate oh, and yes, the 17-year-old in the background yes, hanging out, waiting? Very for patient. The... <laughs> Very patient. All right. So nice I have – can you actually get me the ice cream out, Johnny? Okay. So we've got our um, caramel sauce going yeah. over the top. Just six. Like so. And this caramel sauce, um, you can just pop it in a, in a jar and it will last a little while. It tastes amazing. Sorry about that, people. <laughs> With a scoop of, if I had a hot spoon, I'd do a quenelle, but I'm not. So we'll just put down a little bit of ice cream down there. I'm sure Sean can add some more to his own when he's ready. And then I just used, rather than let the cream go off in the fridge, I just whipped up some cream 
another bowl to go on top. And we've just got a splash of cream. Clearly um, no calories in any of this this evening. Made in the Thermomix, calorie free. And there we have sticky toffee puddings. Wow, oh wow. <laughs> what a way to Yum. end the Varoma class. Thank you so much, Mel. And look, at my a absolute huge, pleasure. A huge thank you to all of our presenters Sarah Burnett, um, Sarah Evans, Haley Hill, Mel Goodrich, um, and Ivana Hayes, and to our wonderful co hosts Janine and Amy and Tammy. Um, it takes a village doesn't it? <laughs> we have a wonderful community and we're very fortunate to have, um, you know, these presenters tonight are doing this um, in their own time because they want to inspire you to get more use out of your Thermomix. They're donating their ingredients, their time and their expertise. So I really hope you've enjoyed the class. I hope you've learned something. I hope you will get your thermo, your, your Varoma out of the box if that's where it's been sitting and you will put it to very good use. Now, as we said before, the very next cooking class that we have coming up. Um, oh, do we have Ivana, Amy um, to show I'm you? I'm here. I'm oh, here, Trudy. Trudy. Sorry. Uh, you said when you went next time, that would be the last time we'd see you. So I was, I didn't know you were there. Do you want to just very quickly show us your end product? Because we're horribly over time, Ivana. You know what, Trudy? Oh, thank you so much for everyone bearing with me. It's been very frustrating. But uh, what I do want to show is... You know what, I grabbed a lid. This is what actually what I'm doing, preparing breakfast and for my uh, family tomorrow. You can grab the lid, put it on top of a jar, fill them up, I would say about three quarters with yogurt. And then you can use any type of ingredients, fresh fruits, dried fruits, oats, and fill up your jars, put a lid on, put it in the fridge, and you've got breakfast ready to go. The rest of the yogurt that you've made here, you can use for salad dressings, for other dishes. And it's just it's like so many levels of usage for this beautiful yogurt. Uh, my, I know that my boys will enjoy this little package tomorrow morning when they wake up and take it out of the fridge. So Trudy, uh, and of course, just one thing that you've inspired me, Trudy, there's a wonderful recipe, Kada muesli that you can put uh, whip up in five minutes and put it on top of this wonderful yogurt add a little bit of honey or a little bit of cinnamon and what a beautiful breakfast to have in the morning hey ivana five minutes what do you mean it's four seconds to make carter that's it that's, <laughs> that's it that's, You're that's right one of my favorite recipes anything that can be done that quickly and tastes so good is definitely on my hit list three seconds tammy say um, okay, so thank you, Ivana. I'm glad you were there just to show us the end product. Thank you very much. Um, so our next um, cooking class is actually a face-to-face -face cooking class in our Waterloo Experience Centre. That is this Thursday night. Um, I can't remember what date Thursday is, but it's this coming Thursday night, so just a matter of uh, a few nights away. Um, the tickets for that are $30 each, but yes, we can be in the same room. You can get the aromas, you can taste the food. Um, so if you would like to join us for that one, just let your consultant know and we will get that link to you so you can um, join into that one. But I do hope that we will see you in the not too distant future at another workshop. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you are interested in getting a Thermomix into your kitchen or you would like to find out more about the business or you would like to have your own in-home cooking experience or even virtually, please just talk to your consultant about that. If you don't have a consultant, let us know and we will make sure we put you in contact with one. Oh, and um, somebody, I think it was Tammy, has just put in the, oh no, Amy has. Um, put in the link to get tickets for Thursday night if you would like to join us for that one. All right, so as I said, the presenters and I will hang around for a little bit um, afterwards uh, and you will be able to come off mute and ask us any questions that you might have. Um, otherwise, we'll say good night and hopefully we'll see you at another workshop soon. Good night, everybody. <laughs>